solution equilibrium, and factors affecting solubility. Now let's talk about what is happening in a solution and what factors can affect solubility. In this video, we will discuss what equilibrium is and relate that to solutions. We will describe temperature's effect on the solubility of solids and both temperature and pressure's effect of the solubility of gases in a liquid. First, let's start with solids in a liquid. When we are talking about a solid dissolving in water, these are very often ionic. The water will surround the ions, as we discussed in the other sections. But this isn't simply a one-way process. Think about what happens if you keep adding salt to water. Eventually, if you add enough salt, you'll dissolve so much salt that no more will go into solution. When you have this, it is called a saturated solution. Some components are easier able to dissolve like this than others. Soluble compounds are those that have a very high solubility. Compounds that have a very, very, very low solubility are generally called insoluble. There is a really large range of solubility. Dividing them into the two classes is a really dramatic oversimplification. In either case, though, once you dissolve the most possible that the solution can hold, we have a saturated solution. We then have a dynamic equilibrium where the ions are dissolving and precipitating, but they're going to be doing so at the exact same speed, and so the overall concentration doesn't change. This concept is called a dynamic equilibrium. It's an equilibrium because it's staying the same, it's dynamic because it's going back and forth rather than staying static. You can shift this equilibrium in one direction or another um, through several variables. In this class, we're going to cover this very conceptually, and you're going to be covering it more quantitatively in 1C, where we will break down the exact amount of solubility and do calculations with it. So let's talk about this. If we're dissolving a solid into a liquid, think about this before I tell you the answer. So take a guess. If you have higher temperatures, that is going to equal faster movement of the molecules. What do you think that this will do to solubility? Will higher temperatures increase or decrease the solubility? As temperature increases, and therefore the speed of the molecules increase, the intermolecular forces are more easily broken. This means that the solubility of the solid is increased because the water is, or liquid or solvent, is able to overcome the intermolecular forces of the solid. As the temperature increases, those increasing speed, increasing kinetic energy, breaks the intermolecular forces easier. There are occasional exceptions to this rule. For example, if you look at this graph, the sodium sulfate being the one example. But for the most part, increasing temperature increases solubility. Now let's talk about gases in a liquid. Think about what this would do. As your temperature increases, the molecules are moving faster. How would this change the solubility of a gas? Take a guess before moving on. For gases, unlike solids, the warmer the temperature, the less solubility there is. This is because the gas is sort of being held captive by the solution in the by the intermolecular forces. As these intermolecular forces are broken by increasing the speed of the molecules, the gas is able to escape into the surrounding air. Let's talk about a few examples in real life that this comes up. So this is why warm soda fizzes more. The fizz is actually the gas escaping. It will go flat much faster if you have warm soda than if you have cold soda. It's also the reason that water gets these little bubbles on the bottom of the pan before it starts to boil. If you can remember back to when you were a kid and you would say, oh, you know, the water's boiling and your mom or dad might say, no, no, it's not boiling yet. This isn't true boiling. Rather, it's gas molecules that are sort of falling out of solution as the water warms up. Interestingly enough, it's even why fishing on warm days can be problematic. Much of the dissolved oxygen that's in the lake or the river gets released into the air. And the fish, which become pretty low on oxygen because there's a lower amount of oxygen in the water, they get a bit lethargic and they aren't as likely to be out hunting for food. So now let's think about pressure. Just like with our previous examples, be sure to take a guess before moving on. If you increase the pressure, how is that going to affect how much gas is trapped in a liquid? This one actually has a law associated with it. Henry's law tells us that the solubility of a gas increases as you increase pressure. 
This is because as you increase the pressure in the container, the gases have more forces pushing them into the liquid. To reestablish this equilibrium, some of the gas must go into the liquid. And this is actually proportional to a constant, which is dependent on the gas. We'll do an example problem with this formula in a moment. So Henry's law is the reason that you can hear and feel something changing as you open a soda can, and the reason why soda goes flat, regardless of the temperature, if you leave it out long enough. As you open the can, the pressure that was holding the CO2 in the soda is released. So this is what you hear as a hissing noise. From the moment that the soda is opened, the CO2 is escaping from the liquid, giving you a very limited amount of time to drink it before it becomes flat and, in my opinion, tastes terrible. Let's do an example with Henry's Law. Here I ask for the solubility of a gas if the pressure of carbon dioxide in a soda bottle is 4.6 atmospheres. I tell you the Henry's Law constant. So it now becomes a matter of filling in our knowns and solving for our unknowns. We can fill in our 3.4 times 10 to the negative second moles over atmospheres, and we can multiply that by our 4.6 atmospheres to get our final solubility of 0.15 molar. Lots of things were covered in this section, so let's actually spend two slides reviewing. In a solution that's in dynamic equilibrium, the rates of dissolution and recrystallization are the same. A saturated solution that has this dynamic equilibrium present is considered saturated. A solution with less than this is unsaturated and you won't get the, pre the precipitation back. It won't be a dynamic equilibrium. A solution with more than this, which we actually didn't talk about but can occur, and is called supersaturated. The solubility of most solids in water increases as temperature increases. The solubility of most gases in liquids decrease with increasing temperature. The solubility of most gases in liquids increases with increasing pressure.